Welcome to another edition of Horse Center, everyone. I am Brian Zipsy, and as always, I have the excellent pleasure of being joined by my co-host to the East Coast, that's Matt Schiffman. How are you today, Matt? I'm okay, Brian. We got uh, racing at Saratoga and at Del Mar, two big races. Imagine that. Yeah, it, it's a good weekend, Matt. Uh, if we're looking ahead to the Travers, which looks to be the early race of the summer or is stacking up to be the race of the summer uh the jim dandy is certainly a big prep this race is more than a prep though but before we jump in matt how about last week uh some big winners uh, uh nest was the bomb at saratoga in the coaching club of american oaks my pick secret oath did not show up unfortunately second but nest was awesome clary air taking down Malathot for the second straight time. You know, Malathot beat her four out of four last year, and this year it's Clarier, two for two. And then the story of the Haskell for me, Matt, is Gunrunner. Gunrunner, sons of Gunrunner. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely, Brian, in the Haskell. Cyberknife uh, getting that second grade one win. It was an exciting finish. Yeah, hopefully we see both Cyberknife and Taiba back in the Travers. White of Barrio did not lift a hoof, unfortunately, in the uh, in the Haskell. And Jack Christopher may have showed some distance limitations early on in his career. But if we get Cyberknife and Taiba going to the Travers with uh, maybe Nest and Charge It and some of these Jim Dandy horses, the Travers is looking good, Matt. On that note, let's jump into this Jim Dandy because again, once again, it's a Toga small field, but there's real quality in this gym dandy. Yeah, Brian, there sure is. We got three, you know, three of the top seven finishers from the Kentucky Derby. Throw in the Preakness winner. That's a pretty good field, even though it's a fi only five horses. Yeah, I, I guess if you're talking about the best three-year-olds of the year so far, three-year-old males of the year, you could easily say Epicenter, Early Voting, and Zandon are in the top five or six. And Tawny Port, Tawny Port with two graded stakes wins, <laughs> Keeneland and Thistledown, it's not all that far behind, Matt. Then you got Western River, Western River to the rail for trainer Rudolph Brissett, Matt. He is prepping for the Travers to be a long shot there because he's coming out of a mile and a half race at Churchill Downs. Kind of an odd prep for the Jim Dandy. Yeah, that's for sure. He was also entered in the uh, Curlin, uh, which is the day before, I think, and seems to be a, a better spot for that horse to run in, being that the Curlin is a restricted to non-stakes winner uh, uh, uh a stake but anyway yeah uh, uh certainly western river that was a you know on the chart it looks like a big win at, at churchill but yeah going a mile and a half and and this is a big 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 step up to face these kind of horses that we were describing yeah absolutely he's a well-bred uh he's a well-bred horse and I, I think he might be a horse that gets better as he matures but uh hasn't broke through broke through in stakes company yet he was pretty well beaten fourth in the peter pan uh earlier this uh this or late spring early summer i think it was still late spring the peter pan so western river sure looks like the outsider of the bunch matt but the other four you could make a strong case for it. starting with number two we have him as a slight favorite here on the morning line epicenter epicenter was the uh, the horse in new orleans in fact he beat uh, zandon in the risen star he won the louisiana derby impressively he came to kentucky as the favorite for the kentucky derby he was the favorite for both the kentucky derby and the preakness in fact and he ran very good races to be second in both sure did uh you know, it's hard to fault uh, uh, anything that Epicenter has done this year. Second in the Kentucky Derby, looked like a winner pretty far down the stretch. And then we know what happened with the big upset by uh, uh, by Rich Strike. Uh, Preakness was second, it ran into uh, early voting. Chad Brown connections decided to skip the Derby to prepare for the Preakness. And it was a, uh, it was once again, a winning strategy for them. Um, since, uh, 
the Preakness. Steve Asmussen has given Epicenter some time off, which he certainly deserved. And we'll see. Uh, um, Asmussen has a history of, you know, this kind of horse as they mature for him, as they continue to run, get better and better. And uh, if Epicenter maybe just gets one of those betters, he could be very hard to beat. Yeah, or maybe he doesn't need to get better at all, Matt. The Sun and Not this time has been very good. Six straight stakes races, three wins, three tough luck, tough luck seconds. Uh, the Kentucky Derby, you know, he did his job. He did everything to win. He, he stalked a very fast pace, made his move. He held off Zandon, his competition early and mid-stretch. And then he probably never saw Rich Strike flying up the rail in that Kentucky Derby. And the Preakness... He did not have the trip, certainly the winner early voting did. I thought early voting had a dream trip in the Preakness, sitting off a long shot early leader all alone there in second while at the center was squeezed back. Uh, didn't show as much speed as he has in past, was squeezed back and really had to rally in the Preakness. Early voting won it, but a lot of people came out of the Preakness thinking Epicenter was best. Neither have run since the Preakness. Epicenter should show more speed this time in this short field, and there's only two horses with real tactical speed. The three, Tony Port, Matt, does not have tactical speed. Uh, but I thought he made a pretty, dare I say, electrifying move when he uh, rallied on the turn at Thistle Downs to quickly collar some pretty good horses in Classic Causeway and White Barrio on his way to winning the Ohio Derby. Yeah, that's for sure. We know Classic Causeway came back from that Ohio Derby with a big victory on the on the turf. And you, you look at Tony Port's record. He's got a really nice win in the Lexington before the Kentucky Derby. And then after the Kentucky Derby, he's got the nice win in the Ohio Derby. And he was seventh in the Kentucky Derby, which was, you know, not a bad uh, performance at all. And now we're looking at this horse who is pretty much for sure going to be the fourth choice. Yeah, absolutely. The fourth choice, uh, he gets Irad Ortiz Jr. again, who picked up the mount for the Ohio Derby and does not ride either of the big brown horses. So yeah, Tony Port, Irad Ortiz, uh, while the other three favorites, or the three favorites, Epicenter, Early Voting, and Zandon, haven't raced since top triple crown races in May, Tony Port's been racing, and if you look at his record, you know, his first try on dirt, he was well beaten fifth behind Epicenter and Zandon in the Risen Star, but he's gotten better and better, and he keeps throwing in good races. Uh, the the Certainly the Lexington was good. I thought the Ohio Derby was even better, and uh, yeah, in the Derby, he made a move. He hung a little bit late in that Kentucky Derby, but uh, wasn't beaten all that much, ran a good race. Gets the leading rider, Irad Ortiz, for the Jim, De Jim Dandy, and is a legitimate, I guess you could call him a long shot in this five-course field. The next horse on the list, Matt, is early voting, and early voting has just done little wrong in a four-race career. Yeah, that's for sure. Three three wins, three big wins in four starts. Um, he also won the Withers, was second in the Wood Memorial, just a neck behind Mo Donegal, who we know went on to win the Belmont Stakes. So his past performances are are very, very, very hard to fault. And I guess it's possible that uh, in the Jim Dandy, gates will open. He's going to go to the lead with a chance to control this race right from the get-go. Yeah, that's possible, Matt. I, I'm kind of looking more as a uh, cat and mouse game early between early voting and epicenter because I think, like I said, those are the two real horses with any tactical speed in here. So it, it's uh, it, it's uh, go out and watch me and 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 see how uh, much pressure I can put on you and who's better when the real running begins. Uh, I, I think epicenter is certainly not going to fall behind in the race like he did in at both Churchill Downs a little bit and especially at the Preakness. He he had a lot of speed in, in those races down in Louisiana. And I think we're going to get him to utilize that speed some more. You can probably tell folks that I am not going to be picking early voting. I certainly have great respect for him, an excellent record in four lifetime races. He looked like he could win the Wood Memorial for most of the race before Mo Donegal just powered home late. And the Preakness, he won uh, rather decisively, although I talked about that dream trip and, and the, the, the difference between his trip 
And I think what Epicenter found in that Preakness was pretty huge, Matt. But uh, Chad Brown, Saratoga, coming off another little bit of a freshener, early voting certainly must be respected. Yeah, that's for sure, Brian. And the other Chad Brown must be respected as well, Matt, and his name is Zandin. And Zandin, while the other two early voting at Epicenter haven't run since the Preakness, you can go two weeks farther back for Zandin. This is kind of Chad Brown MO, though, uh, not uh, running his big horses too often. Uh, Zandin was a very impressive winner of the Bluegrass. I he, he was my top pick in the Kentucky Derby, and I think he ran a very good race. He could just never get by Epicenter on the far outside there. And finished third in that Kentucky Derby. Time off. Now he comes back. This is a prep for the Travers four weeks after Saturday. But on the other hand, this is a race you want to win too. Is Zandon ready to win? I don't know. We'll find out. You know, uh, uh, Brown is awfully good after giving a horse with the talent of Zandon some extra time. And, and you know, Zandon had hasn't really run a bad race. We got to throw in that controversial finish in the Remsen uh, involved with Mo Donegal. Uh, it, it's hard to knock Zandon, as is the case with the top three in here, with early voting and uh, with Epicenter. It's hard to knock all of those. Um, it seems like Zandon is going to be the third choice in this, which will, I guess, make him a little bit more attractive uh, than the other two, but I don't think he's going to be, you know, a, 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 a four to one or a seven to two third choice. Not likely. No, Matt, I think you're right. Uh, in fact, we saw the Saratoga morning line come out and Zandon is two to one on that morning line. Uh, very similar to what we have at five to two, but the third choice is likely because he's facing the Preakness winner stable mate early voting and Epicenter. Zandon was beaten by Epicenter twice now because he was beaten by him in Louisiana as well. But that was a slow pace and Zandon was way back. And then, and then the Derby, uh, you know, he, he kept coming at Epicenter, but Epicenter was a little too tough for him. Zandon is more lightly raced. You're right. They're both very consistent, as is early voting. They both run nothing but good races. Zandon, five races, they're all very good, starting with a debut win last October. Uh, he'll be one of the ralliers in the race, uh, uh, along with Tawny Port and Western River. So if Epicenter and early voting uh, give each other just a little bit of trouble early or in the mid part of the race, Zandon might be the most likely to, to capitalize. Uh, I do think it's a little bit of a guessing game, Matt, because you got three horses who haven't run since May. Uh, the Travers is probably the biggest goal for the three of them. Uh, who is going to run their best on Saturday? That that we don't know for sure. Yeah, I feel felt exactly the same way. That it is just so hard to separate those three. All three have wonderful credentials. All three could easily win the race. It certainly seems like one of them is going to win that race. Um, you know, I, I you know toyed with the idea of Tawny Port, you know, and the odds that you're going to get on the horse uh, being the fourth choice. But, you know, it seems hard to say that either early voting or Epicenter or Zandon are not going to win. Yeah, I can't disagree with you. I, I, although I do like Tawny Port to, to run a very good race and yeah. probably get into the triple, probably beat one of the returning horses. I'm not sure which one won't run their very best, but Tawny Port is a very good horse. Makes for a very interesting Jim Dandy Saturday at Saratoga. Another short uh, graded stakes race on short field in a graded stakes race, but again, very good talent and obviously a huge prep for the big one, the Travers, in late August. Matt, we're going to switch gears, switch coasts. We're going to head to Del Mar. It's the biggest day of the meet so far at Del Mar. They have the grade one Bing Crosby for, for older sprinters. But I think the race of the day is actually the grade two, and that's the one we're going to look at. It's the San Diego Handicap Saturday at Del Mar. And, Matt, there's nine horses in here, and there's a few that I don't expect to win. But I would say all nine are at least interesting horses who you could make a case for, maybe not in this race, but make a case for for being graded stakes winners. Uh, I, I guess I'm talking to, talking about Senior Buscador the most because he's a very interesting horse coming from 
Oklahoma and Texas with a long layoff thrown in. He's he's the outsider of the nine, but I could see this horse becoming a very good horse. Yeah, Brian, you know, you got to think back a couple years and uh, to early on in the Kentucky Derby Trail, and he was a winner uh, in the Springboard Mile and, and has come back to uh, have a nice allowance win. And, and like you said about this field, uh, with most of these horses, you can go – through their past performances and find a really, really big victory in a really important race, uh, most of them out west. I don't think any of the nine would shock me if they won. I don't think any of the nine in the San Diego would surprise me that greatly if they won. Now, let's start with number one. There goes Harvard. There goes Harvard has uh, suddenly become a very good horse. He was kicking around Kentucky with some decent results last year. But since going to California, He's become a force on the handicap uh, circuit out there. Yeah, sure has. Uh, uh, trained by Michael McCarthy, um, this four-year-old has a you know terrific record. Has hit the board in eleven of twelve starts. Currently, um, has won three races in a row. Won the Gold Cup um, and won a turf allowance, and then an allowance on the dirt at San Diego at Santa Anita to uh, have that three wins in a row, showing a lot of versatility, showing talent. And and ultimately, that win in the Gold Cup was certainly his uh, uh, coming out party. It was. It was. And it was at Santa Anita. He's riding a winning streak, but he's one of those horses who hasn't been to Del Mar yet. And Del Mar is a little different than San Diego. Got a good trip uh, just off the lead of the funded and stiletto boy. Ran a big race to win the grade one. Uh, Gold Cup last time. Certainly a horse who has a shot in here. The two defunded was the horse that set the pace in there. I was a little, I wasn't sure if it was going to be him or Stiletto Boy. Stiletto Boy backed off. Defunded almost went all the way. There goes Harvard too good late. Defunded is the other Baffert in here, Matt. And he's been getting better and better uh, for Bob Baffert. And he's got speed. Yeah. And he's been first or second. In his last five races, Brian, including as, as we, as you mentioned, a second in that uh, Gold Cup, and uh, you know a couple of allowance wins, one of them at Santa Anita and one of them at Del Mar. So uh, we know he likes uh, the track in San Diego. Yeah, he won big at Del Mar, and I think a mile and sixteenth might be better than him for than a mile and a quarter. So he is a dangerous horse, but there's a reason why I don't like him best in here. We're going to get to that in a minute, but first let's talk about Mandaloon. Mandaloon, Matt, this is, uh, as I look at the two favorites in here, Mandaloon, the three, and Country Grammar should be the favorite, the eight. It, it speaks to what you often talk about or, or, or don't like when those American horses go overseas, uh, specifically to the desert to race. You don't love that. I'm, I'm more the uh, school of thought that I'd like to see Americans do well in big races internationally. But you say no, it knocks them out too much. Mandaloon did not run well in the Saudi Cup and didn't look all that great in his return race for Brad Cox uh, recently at Churchill Downs. Yeah, and and certainly, you know, the, the ninth in the Saudi Cup is one thing, but then the fourth in the Foster was a little bit concerning, uh, particularly since Brad Cox's runners have been doing so well in big races all over the country. Um, uh, Mandaloon is going to have to turn things around against a pretty tough field here. Again, shipping across the country to California. Yeah, and, and something you say about these uh, California, I think this is an especially good grade two older male dirt race in California, but something you often say is the usual suspects. And often we would like a horse like Mandaloon in a race like this where He's got real class in in in, in mostly Kentucky, uh, but all over the the uh, east of the Mississippi. But those two races have to worry you because he just didn't show up in Saudi Arabia, and then that fourth well beaten fourth uh, last time in the Foster makes you wonder if Mandaloon has returned uh, at his best. Number four, Stiletto Boy, and Stiletto Boy is the reason that I can't pick the funded to win this race, Matt. I think Stiletto Boy is a horse who's better when he's sent to the lead. J.J. Hernandez did that beautifully in the Californian two races back, and Stiletto Boy probably ran the best race of his career 
in a career where he's run a lot of good races. Last time he laid off a defunded, and I don't think it worked in the mile and a quarter Gold Cup. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, when we started talking about this race, I, I mentioned there are so many horses that if you look at their PPs, you can find a performance that makes them a clear contender to win this race. And and with Stiletto Boy, you mentioned that Californian, uh, that was a heck of a performance. Um, but, you know, in, in some of the other big races, he hasn't run badly, you know, the fourth in the Gold Cup, third in the Big Cap. Um, around that Californian, it, it makes it tough to handicap that race because if he runs like he did when he had that victory, um, he's a serious threat. Yeah, and he's a reason I think the pace is going to be uh, realistic or maybe even fast in here because I think they're going to learn from that Gold Cup and, and let Stiletto Boy uh, get going early in this race a little bit more. Is he better than Defunded? I, it, it, Yet to be known, he's done more than Defunded in his career. Defunded beat him last time. Defunded's on the improve. But I, I think Stiletto Boy is still a very good horse, despite that uh, disappointment last time in the Gold Cup. Senior Buscador, we talked about, he's only had one race in more than a year, and it was a sprint at Lone Star Park. It's hard to pick him here, but I think he's a very nice rallying horse. Parnelli's a horse who's tried stakes races a bunch earlier in his career. Couldn't break through, but he seems to be in career best form, Matt. Yeah, he's got a nice uh, uh, a couple of nice allowance wins at Santa Anita recently from the barn of John Sheriffs. Um, so uh, you know uh, he's got some credentials. I think I see him as a notch below some of the others that we have been endorsing a little bit. I do too. I do too. But I think a mile of 16th and he's running well lately makes him at least someone to think about, especially if he's double digit odds, as we suspect. Another horse to think about, Matt, is Tripoli. Six to one on our morning line here. He could be even higher, but he was the winner of the Pacific Classic last year at Del Mar. He was also a good second in the San Diego handicap last year. He's only had one race this year, but I thought it was a good prep on the turf where he ran a pretty good race despite some trouble in a fast turf race. Uh, he should be ready returning to his favorite track. If there's some speed, I think Tripoli is dangerous in here. Yep, John Sadler uh, training this one. Um, again, you go back and you find that Pacific Classic victory and, and a good performance in the San Diego last year. He ran in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Uh, uh, last year also, and, and clearly that uh, fourth place in that uh, grade three turf race was, uh, you know, uh, a prep race, get a race under his belt, um, heading to uh, these summer stakes. Yeah, and he's obviously a horse who likes Delmar. I even think he runs well for jockey TJ Pereira, who's who's back on him again after not riding him in all those races after his very good races at Del Mar. If you look at his performances under TJ Pereira, Tripoli is run. So watch out for Tripoli in here, I guess is what I'm saying. Finally, we get to the favorite, number eight, Country Grammar, the Baffert. We call Defunded the other Baffert. Country Grammar is the Baffert here, the likely favorite. Very lightly raced, Matt. He's had four seasons on the racetrack, and he's still only run 10 times. But he's been a good horse in all four seasons. Seems to be getting better each year. Ran well out in California last year. Certainly ran well overseas earlier this year. Yes, and I agree, Brian. Uh, um, he certainly has run his best races recently. Uh, before he went to the Middle East, he was a, the winner of the gold cup in 2021 and then you know uh, very impressive victories uh in the saudi cup and the dubai world cup uh bringing uh, a whole bunch of cash home for uh for baffert and the ownership um again you know uh I, at brian you you mentioned how i feel about horses coming back from uh, the Middle East and, and, and Baffert's just coming back to training, um, but he deserves to be the favorite. Okay, he deserves to be the favorite. Um, but yeah, it's been a long layoff coming from two races overseas, good second in the Saudi Cup, good win in the Dubai World Cup. Uh, but there's a lot to worry about here. Baffert has not had a good history with, he's had horses come from Dubai specifically before and, and return after a layoff in the San Diego and hasn't always done well. 
in those races. He's working well. He he is the the, the class of the race. Uh, I say that even over Mandaloon, but uh, the Peter Pan winner, a uh, grade one winner last year, the Dubai World Cup winner this year. Not sure if he's going to be at his sharpest. Um, as the favorite, I'm I'm going to lay off him, but I think you're right. I think he is uh, a deserving favorite. A horse he battled with twice, only two races last year, but a horse he battled with twice last year was Royal Ship. Royal Ship's kind of high there on our morning line at 8-1, to one, coming off a disappointing run when third last time in the Gold Cup. Uh, Royal Ship looks very good at times for trainer uh, Richard Mandala, but on the other hand, he just hasn't seemed to broken uh, breaking through against the best competition. I don't know if he'll do it here, but he's one of those wild cards that you have to fear at least, uh, especially considering how well he ran against country grammar last year. Yeah, I agree. Uh, another horse with uh, some, some good back class, some good performances um, high on the morning line. Maybe that's because he's now six years old, um, which, you know, he, you have to factor into the equation is is a is this six year old going to be able to regain his best form that he'll need to you know be a serious contender in this race? Yeah, having said that, he was a pretty clear favorite in the Gold Cup in his last race, so maybe it's just a bounce back that Royal Ship needs to run a big race in here. All right, Matt, it's time. It's time. We talked about the Jim Dandy and, two, and the San Diego, the two races we're most excited about this weekend at Saratoga and Del Mar. I want to know top picks. As usual, I'm going to let you go first. And since we did the Jim Dandy first, Matt, you're up with the tough Jim Dandy at Saratoga. Yeah, tough Jim Dandy. It's This is two tough races to pick winners in with uh, any confidence when there are so many horses in each of the races that could easily win. We got no standouts in either of these. I guess, you know, uh, in the Jim Dandy, uh, I like all three of the favorites. I ended up on Zandon just because he's going to be the third choice. Just because he's going to be the third choice. Okay, well, if, if there's um, a little bit of a pace battle, I think it sets up nicely for Zandon. I think Epicenter will not let early voting go. I'm kind of changing my allegiance in Seer because I was on Zandon in the Derby. Now I'm switching to Epicenter. I, I just think this is a nice spot. Steve Asmussen's going well. Uh, I think he will... Uh, I think the race will really come down to him in early voting, at least for the first seven and a half furlongs. And I just think he's a little bit better than early voting. So, yeah, he's the favorite, I guess, but a lukewarm favorite over both brown horses are going to get that. As you said, all three will get that. I'm really going to use Epicenter in this race. I think he's the most likely winner. I'm going to use him on top in the triples. Yeah, I'm betting trifectas in a five-horse race, I know, but I kind of like it as a trifecta race, assuming all five go, and it is a trifecta race, because I think Tawny Port's going to get into the triple. So I'm going to use Epicenter on top, and I'm going to use Tawny Port underneath with uh, with the brown horses, and I'm hoping that one of the brown horses finishes out of the money, but uh, I don't know. I don't know. That That doesn't happen a lot at Saratoga. We'll see. But I like up the center best. In the San Diego, Matt, uh, neither of us are on the favorite country grammar. Neither of us are on the second choice mandaloon. Who do you like? Yeah, I, I think there are, are plenty of reasons to be a little suspect about, about both of the top choices. Country grammar coming back from the Middle East off that layoff. Uh, mandaloon not looking so good uh, in his return after the trip to the Middle East, so many to choose from. I'm going to go, Brian, with uh, trainer Michael McCarthy. I have tons of respect for him. And uh, I think, as we said, he's got There Goes Harvard in the best form of his career. He's going to have a chance to have a ground-saving trip, breaking from the rail. I'm going to go with There Goes Harvard as my top pick. Yeah, and, and to be honest with you, Matt, I thought about There Goes Harvard as well. I, I'm not sure about the rail, and I'm not sure about the first time at Del Mar. So I, I leave that on Triple E. I, I do worry a mile 16th is a little shorter than his best. But on the other hand, he ran very well in this race last year. He won the Pacific Classic last year. I know he loves Del Mar. I like the reunion with his jockey. like his return race. I think there's going to be a solid pace for Triple E. 
So I'm going to try Tripoli, and I, I'm hoping that he is the fifth or sixth choice in this difficult San Diego handicap. There you have it, folks. There are our top picks. Before we go, I want to remind you to uh, please do subscribe if you haven't yet subscribed to our YouTube channel here at Horse Racing Nation. It sure helps Matt and I out. Matt, I want to get a parting shot from you, my friend. Absolutely, Brian. Hey, I think we've given you a lot to think about for these races because we certainly had a lot to think about preparing for the show and coming up with our picks. So good luck um, at Del Mar. Good luck at Saratoga. And as always, thanks for watching the show. Thank you, Matt. And thank you to our uh, our friend Candace Curtis for the race graphics. Thanks to Derby Wars, the sponsor and the best contest site out there. But most of all, folks, thanks to you for watching each and every week. We'll be back next week with a big Whitney show. Don't miss it. But for now, have a great weekend. Good luck. We'll see you next week.